much. Why'd you say that so loudly, Alex? That was scary. I'm me. trying to get the retention up, man. I want people to subscribe to the YouTube channel so I'm going to be loud and funny. Well, by shouting, that's going to make him click off. That's so counterintuitive. Why would you do that? I hate my audience. Do you know who hates people more than me? Me. Yes, but whoever made Super Size versus Super Skinny, which is the show we're going to be watching right now, George. Oh, fun. Good fun. Let's go. I love bullying the the large. Okay, it's Super Size versus Super Skinny, so everybody's fair game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair, fair. So we can bully both ends of the spectrum. No, we're not going to bully any of them. We're going to point out that the show is inherently wrong for pitting these two people against each other. Are you saying that so you don't get demonetized or cancelled, Alex? This is like the equivalent of, like, you know that guy on TikTok who makes, like, bugs fight each other? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what this TV show is. It pits them against each other. Well, I would pay to watch that, though. Put a £400 man into the ring with a £15 anorexic child and see who comes out of that. Wait, 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 wait. So do they, like, pit them against each other and there's a winner? We'll find out, man. I don't know. Let's see. Obesity levels worldwide have more than doubled in the last 30 Fuck years, no. claiming more than 3 million lives every year. Jesus Christ. Who was responsible for getting that B-roll, do you reckon? A cameraman, probably. Yeah, but do you reckon those people know they're in this show? Probably. Imagine you end up on Super Size vs. Super Skinny as B-roll, just to show how fat you are. <laughs> I'm assuming these are people in the show. The guy comes over with his clipboard, the producer, his clipboard, <laughs> and his Bluetooth earpiece on. And he goes, I need you to sign the release form for uh, the TV show we're making. Oh, which TV show is it? Oh, never mind, never mind that. Just sign it if you'd like to be in it. God, awful. The epidemic Tony is in the Britain in the stars! A million miles away! McAllen, Texas. <laughs> That's the anthem I want for a show about <laughs> two people with huge life debilitating diseases. That wasn't a fucking complete sentence. Alex, that wasn't a <laughs> that wasn't a sentence. <laughs> Life complete debilitating differences, illness. Try my best to string sight together. Has the highest rate of obesity in the USA, and the consequences have been shattering. We're in America, George. Why is it just an arse shot? What they needed for the show, man. It's not telling us anything. It's just an arse shot. This person fun. could be super sized or super skinny. I wouldn't know. They've just shown an arse oh, shot. They could be really skinny just with a really plump backside. I mean, it's blurred, Alex. I can't really see it very well. Where America leads, Britain so often follows. So I'm here to investigate how obesity impacts on all aspects of life, from birth right through to death, because it's a possible future for us back in the UK if we don't change our ways. Hang on, so they've gone to America yeah. to film people to go, it's gonna be us. We're gonna end up like this. We don't wanna end up like these. People. Have you ever been to like, the South in America. No. I was just going to tell a story. I went to Florida and this family come out of like a Denny's or some other fucking place. And as they sit, they, they've got this massive car. Every time one of them sat in the car, this is a big car, bear in mind. Bro. It fucking tilted. I'm not, I, I'm just <laughs> telling a story. I'm just telling a story because America is bad for that kind of thing. Because the fucking car went boom. And then like when the other person got on it, it went boom. I reckon they balance each other's diets out so that when they all get in the car that it evens out equally. So they go, remember, you've got the back left seat. It's an equilibrium. <laughs> We're getting younger individuals who are more morbidly obese dying unexpectedly. We have to inform the family that we have measured from elbow to elbow on the body and it will not fit in a normal casket. Could you imagine you, your son dies tragically and you buy a coffin and they go, have you ever thought about upgrading? Have you ever thought about supersizing it? It's so dark. Could you imagine that being a conversation you have to have with somebody about somebody you know has passed away? That's awful. See, with you, George, we'd be able to save a lot of money because I'd be able to put you into just like a little shoebox. Right, okay. <laughs> Ideally, I want to be cryogenically frozen like Walt Disney, but a second option just lob me off a cliff. <laughs> I don't want to be a burden on anyone. I don't want anyone to have to pay for a fucking coffin. Those are the only two options for you. Yeah. Be saved for the future of the human race. Actually, launch me out of a cannon. That'd be so fun. He's taking the lessons of McAllen back to the feeding clinic for some of the most extreme diet swaps ever. Fucking Even the hell. That kind of making me feel Wait, crazy, oil? to be honest. Wait, are they cooking or is that just to make an example out of something? Just making a nice beverage. Oh, that's grim. We'll be getting an insider's view into the world of eating disorders through the eyes of recovering anorexic and journalist Emma Wolf. 
This is a fun video, Alex. Lovely. Hey, mate, I used to have a, well, technically kind of still relatively do have an eating disorder, so I'm part of the gang. Bit uh, bleak, this video, isn't it? They always... <laughs> They're not really... Not really very cheery, are they? Not really fun. I love the fact that they've got a guy to host this, George, who's ripped. Like, they've got... <laughs> they've got, we've got like, look at me! Look at me! I'm a specimen! These people are not like me! These people are skinny and fat! I am the perfect in-between of muscle and arm work! Welcome back to Super Size versus Super Skinny. Right, these montages are always the worst thing ever. Like, you could not pay me any money to do what these people have done. Like, how much money would I have to pay you, George, to strip down to your boxes? Well, you see, I have a good physique. I'm ripped. So, um, you know, you wouldn't have to pay me. <laughs> the only okay. thing you might have to pay for is a ticket to the gun show. <laughs> I feel like I probably should have brought you on this video. To investigate America's new fattest town for a stark glimpse of our potential future here in the UK if we don't mend our ways. So they've just gone to America to just, like, point out how fat people are. I mean, it is kind of what you do when you go to America. <laughs> no, I like to go to Venice Beach and see all my friends. George Venice Beach! <laughs> Worst place I've ever been in my life. I have walked through Brixton at night multiple times and felt that I, I, I'd do that any day over walking through Venice Beach in the middle of yeah, the day. Yeah, walking through Brixton at two o'clock in the morning is like the equivalent of a warm hug and a nice cup of cocoa with your grandma compared to fucking walking through Venice Beach at any time in the day. It's like a fucking war zone. Dr. Norma Jean Farley is McAllen's forensic pathologist. Carrying out hundreds of autopsies at the city morgue, Dr. Farley has seen close up just what a devastating impact obesity can have on the body. Why is the morgue just a garage in like some <laughs> It's just someone's house. This looks like a car mechanic shop. There's no way they take dead people here. It is, I swear it is a car mechanic shop. Look at the fucking white ball. No, we got, I've got to figure out what's going on here. McAllen residents have now got so fat, they're having to supersize their morgue. It will need bigger fridges, wider doorways, and autopsy tables that can cope with the weight of McAllen's deceased. This is not a funny show. <laughs> it isn't very funny, is it? I'm trying to think of jokes, but I don't know if, if this is an appropriate time. This show, we are already in the morgue. Not quite what I thought it was going to be. And what's the problem with, with, with trying to do an autopsy of a very large person on this table? Just, Just cremate me. Instantly. I don't want to be created. I don't like the idea of that. I want to be launched out of a cannon, as I said. I'm an organ donor, to be fair, so actually they would have to take my organs. If, you know, if I ever get hit by a car, uh, you know, God yeah. hope that, that does happen. People could take anything they want from me. I, I've given it all away. If you could have a part of me, what would you keep? A cock. <laughs> Back in the UK, Dr. This? Christian wants to make sure that our eating habits aren't on sending here? us to an early grave. The thing is, right, I'm going to go into serious mode here, George. If these people all have like body dysmorphia and genuine like illnesses. I mean, it's not going to help branding them as super sizes or super skinny. This is the worst way to help these people. Let's uh, crank you up 10 times speed as you walk into the room and then speed it up. Could you imagine how meticulous it would be? There would have been one, two, three, four, five takes. But like, this is just humiliation. This is not going to help anybody. This is, your show is inherently evil. I cannot you believe. You've watched six minutes of it. But it Mate, they could end up doing some good for them. We've been to the morgue, we've filmed people's asses, right? Nice. Stop. I think this show is inherently evil. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say it, all right? I don't like it. By pairing them up and making them swap diets in my feeding clinic. It looks like he's about to drop a sick <laughs> rap verse. It looks like a Kendrick Lamar music video or something. Like. Also, why is he standing there, right? Like this. <laughs> so they're like this, and she's going, Sue! <laughs> LJ, come and join me. You've been selected. It's like the Hunger Games. So, LJ, I'm going to pair you up with, with Katie. Hey. Hello. They've just met and they're already hugging, like, half naked. This is a bit... This show is very... Is it a dating show? What's going on? They're being paired up. I don't... I don't it's just like Love Island. This is where Love Island will be in five years' time. I'm going to be kind of poking you in the face going, there's a chocolate bar. Come on, eat it, eat it. I could get snack. Oh, I think you might be gay. <laughs> So I don't think he was dropping game. <laughs> He's spoken for all the four seconds. George is gay, Dar's pegging. Would you say you got a good gay, Dar, George? I'd say so, yeah. I'm a little bit scared that I'm going to be kind of given air and dust. Yeah, he's so straight, Alex. He's so straight. He loves <laughs> he loves minge. Oh, I think you're right. Why did you have to say it in such a vile way? Katie is an incredibly fussy eater and survives on childlike portions, whereas LJ eats too many portions and it's usually greasy Chinese takeaway. I'm <laughs> right behind. 
Take him. These two, right behind me. Yeah, they can hear me. I'm whispering. Weird show. 24-year-old Elder Marley Gangnam Style. Marley, Chinese takeaway. I love how they play that when talking about Chinese food. It's not a song by a Chinese person. Oh, my God. I didn't even make the link. And you'll never guess what his favorite food is. Yep. Chinese takeaway. They just start playing Gangnam Style because it's Chinese food. Yeah. That is really weird. The biggest part. That is the fuck. That looks dodgy <laughs> as fuck. You are getting food poisoning from that. He's a, he's a fucker. He's found a hut on an A road and he just eats that. The hygiene rating on that is not existing. Hey, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look up to see if this place still exists. I'm gonna find the hygiene rating. One sec. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so we're on an A road. It's literally there. No, no, that is not where it is. Of LJ's life when it comes to food is lots and lots of takeaways. Oh, he works wait, there. Wait, it works there. Or is he just such a good friend of the place that he's just allowed behind there? When the call comes in for a delivery and they give me the address and they're like, oh, it's flat 43 and it's instantly, oh my God, flats. And I'm thinking, for Christ's sake, I've got to go up those stairs. Obviously, this was filmed when Gangnam Style came out and famously before the lift was invented. I don't know if you guys remember what it was like before 2012. And there was no lifts, but it was a dark time for everyone and I remember it being quite sad, actually. Then I would take a meal home and I'd probably already eaten two, three meals at work. I mean, to be fair, he gets his takeaway for free, wouldn't you? If you could get free Chinese takeaway, wouldn't you have it for like, every Mate, meal? if I was... I, I ordered delivery maybe twice a day anyway, because, you yeah. know, I'm a privileged uh, psychopath. Even after meal number five, it's hard to resist the secret snack cupboard. It's not very secret if it's got a big fucking light no. on it. <laughs> you know, when you, like, open up something, it's like... And it's like heaven. I'm fucking hell! How'd she do that? Did she eat that? No. Go back, go back. Fucking hell, she just appeared like a ghost. It makes me feel horrible. I feel like I'm not a woman. In this just makes me really want to eat like some proper greasy food. I'm going to order the greasiest scram while we're recording this. Go on. Don't think that's what this show's going to make you feel. KFC or curry. No, I mean, it's better to do the opposite, George. You've taken the wrong message from this. He's sending him to America for a terrifying glimpse of his possible future. <laughs> We're just going to stare at fat people. We're sending you to a country, the whole purpose of going, look at these people, look at them. You don't want to be American. And to be fair, that would work on me. I always fear one day, George, that I wake up and i That I'm I will become American, yeah. It scares the living fuck out of me. thought of meeting someone that's bigger than me, but yeah, it's a little bit scary. So he's going to get there, he's going to walk and he's going to go, Oh, fuck me, I thought I let myself go. Or is that going to be nice? Yeah, but that is another level, isn't it? 24 stone takeaway delivery driver LJ Marley has arrived in Oklahoma to get a glimpse of where he's heading if he doesn't change his terrible takeaway habit. If you don't change your takeaway habit, you'll be permanently shipped to Oklahoma to live out your day. <laughs> that is a fate worse than death. Yeah, I do this about once a week. Oh, lovely. Please, once a week. <laughs> that's the biggest issue I have here, to be fair. Showering once a week is that, you know, that's terrifying. And what I do, since I can't reach down here, she usually uses the wash rag uh -huh. and washes my legs. Right, he has to wash her now. He's been given washing duties. You reckon he knew that was what he was getting into when he signed up to this show? You're going to have to go around washing people? I mean, I, I don't think that's what he agreed to. It gets really dirty underneath there, and then she goes down in between my toes. That's where it tickles. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it turns me on. I, I'd come. Oh, same. There and then. <laughs> Boof. They wouldn't be able to film me doing this bit. I get feral. I mean, even looking at this, it's, it's hard for me. Literally. How do you feel about having Stephanie do it for you? I'd rather have to be able to do it myself, but, you know, when you have this in your way, you know, it's kind of hard to bend over to do it. Me and you do this, and I think it's completely normal. Well, we hose each other down. Yeah, after a long, hard day making Reddit videos. Yeah, yeah. You get all sweaty in the mask, don't you? Yeah, but you always really do get between my feet with your tongue, and it's great. Yeah, brilliant. Nice. Anyway, carry on. LJ. Oh, my God. How are you? <laughs> And you must be Becky. Yes. Becky, I'm Christian. Oh, nice to meet you. The doctor who's going to be looking after this young man. Oh. Becky is hoping she will have lost ten pounds to weigh in today at five hundred and forty-five pounds. I love how he's got his iHeart 
Great Britain t-shirt on. We've got to sing the new version now, don't we? God, God save, save our, our gracious king. king. I heard them sing it at the football today, and I was just like, this is wrong. I don't like it. I mean, we should change the national anthem. I don't want to. I don't want to sing for for Charles. I don't want. I don't want our national team to sing for Charles. I want to sing for Andrew. No, I, 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 want, I think we should replace it with like Chico time or something. Chico time's a fucking banger. So, how have you found it all here in America? It's been a great lesson, and it's also been a bit of a shock as well. That was something I hoped it would be. I think you'll find Becky's in such an advanced state of ill health and most of her problems, if not all of her problems, are related to weight. This reminds me of like when those people would come into school and try and teach you about like drug abuse. I had a guy come in and he, he showed me like the, us like the hole in his leg that he got from abusing heroin and I almost fainted. What? We just had pictures. He went on the True Jordy podcast. <laughs> Well, they had a guy come in and they made you put your finger in his heart. No, I didn't. No, no. But he showed us like pictures of like when like chunks of his leg fell out. That must have been fun. Yeah. Well, cheery. Dr. Christian has asked our super sizer and super skinny to join him in the feeding clinic for an intense two days where they'll swap their terrible diets. Okay. I don't think that's healthy. What do you mean? Swapping their diets. Oh, yeah, yeah. Each of you take on each other's incredibly unhealthy diet. Both of you are on course to die. So what we thought we're going to do is instead of helping you, is we're going to both take you guys and give you the opposite eating disorder. That's just mental. Isn't like the thing of like, um, with like anorexia and stuff, like you can't eat. Like it's like a mental disorder where you can't yeah, bring dude, yourself yeah. to eat. So how, what is it? You can like force feed her. Her child size portions and limited food choices means she under eats by over 500 calories a day. Is that a lot? I don't know. I, I feel as though I do that very regularly. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I feel like I'm actually getting kind of worried watching this day. You eat like a mouse. Why do you smile like that? It's like Alan Partridge. This is, this is like a Partridge <laughs> moment. Yeah, I didn't think my diet was that bad. I just thought it was normal, it was average. I mean, yeah, this is what I do. Yeah. Am I ill? Maybe, I don't know. I feel as though I just don't eat, but I'm fine. Am I fine? I don't know, know anymore. I'm getting hungry though, so I'm gonna, I'm ordering a curry. Whilst finicky Katie needs to take more time to eat. Calling her finicky is so messed up, man. It's an eating disorder, leave these people alone. The first meal is breakfast, which for stuck in a rut Katie is always two slices of toast and a cup of tea. I don't eat breakfast. Neither do I. That is a massive fucking breakfast. Look at that one. Jesus, how'd you eat that? It's called full English for a reason. It's not half English, is it? Yeah, but that's enormous. George, if you're gonna do a full English, do it right, man. Surely. LJ's breakfast is mammoth with two eggs, four slices of bacon, two sausages, three hash browns, beans, fried mushrooms, tomato sauce, two slices of toast, two slices of bread and butter, a pint of squash, and a cup of tea. Wow, stay hydrated, Kim. In the feeding clinic, it's time for lunch. Fussy Katie gave LJ's monster breakfast a good go, and it's time for round two. Curry sauce, rice, chips, and prawn crackers. Whee, that was class. Can't believe how much you're eating. Oh my God, it's gonna get covered in curry sauce. Is that like a pint of curry sauce? Just drinks it. Like. <laughs> oh, I'm sickening. I ill. And LJ served with another tiny bread-based meal. This time it's a toasty. This is what I eat for lunch. That's a, that's a nice toast, to be fair. That is probably about the amount I eat for lunch. George, I started to think that we may have an issue. Well, that we're just unhealthy. I don't eat breakfast like this woman. This is literally exactly what I have for lunch. And God knows what dinner's gonna be. And uh, dare I even think, spaghetti, maybe? That's it. That's my life. And then I'll eat a chocolate muffin occasionally. I was going to eat them during this video, but I thought that would be inappropriate. Maybe. But I thought maybe <laughs> it would be wrong to kind of crack these open during this video. But um, you're ordering. I might as well start. Nice vlogs. <laughs> when you turn up at your friend's mum's house, do you see the slow cooker on? <laughs> Next up is dinner. And while 24 stone takeaway binger LJ seems happy with a child sized portion of lasagna. Oh, I can feel my tummy go. Mmm. <laughs> Picky Katie is not thrilled with her plate. Dinner? I think that's dessert. No, that's is dinner. That no, that's, that's dinner, dinner, mate. That's dinner. To be fair, I've had worse dinners. I've had more unhealthy dinners than that. Bar of chocolate and two fingers. Yes. I'm dreading tomorrow. I'm praying no more curry, no more spices and no more chocolate. <laughs> that's so bad. This show's awful. They've basically gone, well, he can have something half decent. You could be malnourished. You're not going to eat any of the food anyway. And they just give her a bar of chocolate. It's just so strange. LJ eats takeaway whenever he likes, sometimes through the night. So Katie is left to eat yet another takeaway feast of chicken balls, chili chicken, egg fried rice, 
and a pint of cola. Could you imagine somebody walking into your room at three oh. o'clock in the morning? I'd love that. Giving me like that kind of, ah, oh, <laughs> breakfast in bed, yummy. What, at 3 a.m.? Yes, brilliant. All right, I'm going to walk in to your room. Not going to tell you when, what day. At three o'clock in the morning, we have an entire Chinese takeaway and just hand it to you. And oh, I think that'd be like class. That. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd love that. Yeah, I'm sure you won't be angry. So what are the changes that you've managed to make? The biggest one is all the variety in the foods. I've added a lot more variety, a lot more colour. Um, I've added snacks in between every meal. Um, and my meals have got bigger as well. I've done really, really well. That's good. I'm proud of myself. When did you last have a cheese and ham toasty? I still eat them occasionally. <laughs> I can't go to it completely, no. If a man... Try to stop me from eating cheese and ham toasties, George. I'd rip his fingers off one by one and feed them to him. Don't fucking tell me what I can and can't eat, Dr. Christian. So, uh, such unnecessary violence. I was just saying, I'd tell him I wasn't very interested. I don't like authority, Alex. I don't like someone trying to tell me what to do. Really? Bloody hell. So, tell me, how have things been? Well, it's, you know, you'll be really pleased to hear that I've not actually touched a single Chinese takeaway since I've left the house. Just seeing But he what... works there. How the fuck would... How would you resist the temptation? That deserves a medal. When he says left the house, he means the clinic and not as in his walk to... <laughs> the where they've got to go today, surely. It's not as impressive if, if he's only left the house <laughs> an hour ago. Now, I think one of the problems was that you were working as a Chinese takeaway delivery driver. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you've changed your job? I still do deliveries, um, but I don't do takeaway deliveries anymore. I do delivery for parcels throughout the day, oh, so I'm oh. keeping quite active. Yeah. And trust me, from my personal experience, a lot harder to eat. Yeah, you can't eat you can't eat an Amazon box, can I've you? I've bloody tried, and it is near impossible. I feel like I can walk upstairs now without getting terribly out of breath. Good. And... I can't even do that. Every time, it's like near impossible for me. I hate stairs. They're like my biggest fear. I feel my heart going every time I go. I don't mind them. I I, I can do like 25 minutes on the stair machine at the gym. My machine. Wow, very impressive. Because you have put on six pounds in weight. You're nearly, <laughs> you're one pound away from half a stone. <gasps> That's amazing. Well, LJ, it's your turn now. And let me tell you, there's a very good reason why your t-shirts are a little bit more baggy. Why she grabbed him? He could have said that without, like, grabbing his t-shirt, but I guess it's a bit, it's visual, isn't it, TV? So... He's going, you're, you've done such a, a great job. You've done such a good job, lad. Good, <laughs> such a good job. God, this show is so weird. Do you have lost one stone <gasps> Three pounds. Oh my. That's quite a lot. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Amazing. Three inches have come off your tummy. That's a lot. Three inches. That's fucking long. It's like fucking. That's like that much. Yeah. Can we quantify? That's like that's massive. Three inches. That's, that's huge. Ugh. Too much, I'd I, say. Yeah, I'd say in reality, if it was about half an inch, even that's a bit like. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. So, very impressive, LJ. You've done a great job. Well, that brings us to the end of Super Size vs. Super Skinny George. Uh, how do you feel about the show? Super epic. I don't know. I don't know. It was all right. It's just kind of how you, what you expect from a show like this. Like, oh, look at you. You're so fat. Oh, look at what goes into your food. Oh, oh, no, oh, now you've lost weight. Well done. Everyone cheer. What we've learned from today's recording, George, you're fucked.